you are incredible. You're attractive, you're put together, yet you're not in a relationship. Your dates are far and few between. It's like you're in a maze searching for that connection. You can have the type of relationship that you want just by learning these levels of the love relationship. You're about to learn the key to how to manage your emotions so that you can maneuver the right way before and during the time of meeting someone. How to have the right expectations and to position yourself as a valuable partner in a relationship at each level of the love relationship. Don't waste any more time in relationships that you were not meant to be in. Don't do it. You are ready for a relationship, right? But first you have to know how to show up. And then you have to know what to do when you get there. If you're ready for a commitment and your partner isn't, then it might be time for you to reevaluate. Not every connection is meant to last and it's okay. That's how you go through and find the person or be available for the person who you are meant to be with. It's that simple. So what are you bringing to the table? Let's just talk about that. What are you really bringing to the type of relationship that you want? Okay, is it sex? Well, everybody can do that. So you can cook, huh? Okay, well, there's restaurants, there's DoorDash. Okay, oh, maybe you say what you bring to the table is that you can clean house, right? You can keep, your house is so spotless. You can eat off the floor. Everything has its place. You know what? That's not a selling point. Because while this matters, a person at the level where you are or the level that you want to be can pay somebody for all of that. So because you can do these tasks, that's not bringing anything to the table. So you have money. So what? Money is really not what you should concentrate on bringing to the table. Because if those are the things that you think are valuable in a relationship, then you're also bringing insecurities, you're bringing anger, and you're possibly bringing drama. Some women say that they don't want a relationship, but you know what? I don't believe them. If you're saying that, I don't believe you, that you don't want a relationship that you don't want companionship. You don't want someone to wake up with you, to sleep with you, to share things with you, to grow with you, to build with you. You can't tell me you don't want that, okay? You may have convinced yourself that you're fine to go through life strong and independent. And you should be strong and independent while you're single. So I'm saying if you're a woman and you want to be in a relationship with a man, forget all about what's been going on on social media and what society has decided that we should just analyze about each other and get back to the grassroots. You can't be him and have him want to take care of you. That's it. You have to be real about yourself and about how you feel about your relationship status and how you view relationships and be willing and open to hear a different perspective. Overcoming the self-shame associated with not being in a successful relationship is part of the work that you need to do. If you are looking for real love, a real love relationship, you want it to be authentic, you have to show up as authentic. You have to cry when you're supposed to cry. You have to stick up for yourself and that's setting boundaries, but you also should be vulnerable. This is a quote from Carl Jung. He's a famous Swiss psychologist. He introduced the concept of collective unconscious. And here's the quote. The meeting of two personalities is like the contact of two chemical substances. If there is any reaction, both are transformed. All right. And when Carl Jung said that, what he is referring to is that the relationship you have, if you're with somebody, both of you influence each other. Young's profound insight resonates with the idea that each phase of the relationship brings out a transformation and a growth, and both individually and as a couple start to become transformed. So that's why your environment is so important to your emotional health. 
you are single, maybe you've never been married, maybe you've been divorced, maybe you just had a bad breakup, but you have addressed your issues. And I'm not saying you don't have feelings anymore. What I'm saying is you have completed that relationship, right? You have worked on yourself. You have centered yourself. That means that you have developed a means to handle your triggered emotions. You've become an emotional planner. So now you're not triggered by the things that used to trigger you. Now you're able to recognize when something is about you or if something is about a situation and that you can step in and handle it. That's where self-awareness and self-worth are developed and it's getting stronger. You are mastering emotional intelligence because you no longer care what person X, Y, and Z thinks about you or what you're doing or how you handle your business. You have a plan for your life and you execute on that plan. Forget what anybody say, girlfriend, relative. You are working on yourself. You have this list of must-haves, right? But is that reality? Do you match those worst halves? I want somebody who is physically fit. I want somebody with good credit. I want somebody who um, has a plan and is ambitious. I want somebody, you have all this list. Do you match that? Are you the woman that he wants? And I'm not saying you know this, but have you worked on those things that you're asking of him? You know, when I was single, I was divorced before I got in a relationship with my husband. I knew that I would be married again. I never thought that because I got divorced, I was somehow no longer valuable. I was somehow broken or ruined because I had been married and divorced. I could have turned to drinking. I could have turned to alcohol, promiscuity, gambling, whatever. I could have done a lot of things, but I decided to work on me. I can't change other people, but you know, this didn't work out. And I can't believe that it's all right. The other person's fault. I had to put something into this for it not to work out. Let me do the work on me. So in my future relationships, this won't happen. So I prayed and I didn't pray to, that he had drove a certain car or he had a certain degree or worked in a certain field. I didn't pray all of that. What I prayed for was someone who would love me for me. Someone who I shared the same God with. Someone who would be a leader in my household. Someone who would be a provider and a protector. I prayed for someone who had the same morals that I had. The someone who was kind and would love my daughter. I pray for those things. If you don't take the time to find out what you want, then you're missing out. You already know what you don't want. You are lived what you don't want. You have to find out what you want. And what you want might not be just the next person that comes by. You have to be intentional, okay? Realistic deal breakers are what you need. Hello, sophisticated. I want to extend a heartfelt invitation to an experience that has the power to transform your life in ways you might not even imagine. It doesn't matter if you're a busy professional, a dedicated parent, or someone who's navigating life's ups and downs. This opportunity is for you. Introducing the Emotional Reset Challenge, an immersive journey that will empower you with emotional intelligence and sophisticated empowerment, equipping you to manage your emotions so that you can curate the life that you truly desire. Join us in the Emotional Reset Challenge and let's embark on this transformative journey together. Secure your spot now and I'll see you there. Once women start having sex, our emotions do get involved. I don't care what you say, they do. And it just distorts the reality of the relationship, okay? So your expectation should be for a friend, nothing more. But right now you go out on dates, that's fine, right? Men are interested also in women who are doing something. So if you are just a person who goes to work, 
comes home, stays in the house. I mean, you might go to church or you might go someplace, but you're not doing anything to build a life higher or better or increase your knowledge in some kind of way then you could be considered more work for this man that you're looking for instead of an asset, instead of a benefit, instead of a help meet, instead of a helper, instead of a partner, instead of a collaborator, right? You should be doing something for you, not just to catch a man, but for you. And you know, men are attracted to that. And then when you're not doing it, they also stop liking that. If you get with somebody and you feel like there are too many things that are not going in the way that you want them, let them go. You're dating. You haven't invested anything in this person. Do not settle for someone who is not making you feel the way that you want to feel. Work on having individual interests. Work on doing things just for you, just because you want to do them. Not because there's a group of people doing it or somebody told you you should. Do it just for you. And when you show up at places just for you, just because that's what you like to do, people notice. And they notice you because you look more attractive. You're happy. You're satisfied. If you're going to a place doing what you want to love, you're not checking for him in the room, who's in the room. You're not checking for who you can get with or who might be speaking to you or who might think you hot or who might think you're attractive. You don't care about that. What's your happy place? Go there. Thanks for joining me on this episode about how to bring your best to the table. I know it can be frustrating when you see others seemingly finding love effortlessly, but while you're left wondering what's missing, you can remember that you're not in this journey alone. So thanks for joining me. I can't wait to see you on the next episode. Bye.